Well, welcome to our uh, 75th uh, anniversary of the Strand Theatre Memorial Service. Uh, my name is Archie Gormley. I'm president of the Brockton Firefighters Local 144. And I'm proud and humbled and honored to stand before you at this uh, solemn occasion. But we hope uh, we'll do you proud. So on behalf of the Brockton Firefighters Union Local 144 and the Brockton Fire Department, I'd like to welcome you to the 75th anniversary of the Strand Theatre Fire that claimed the lives of our 13 brave Brockton firefighters and also uh, injured many more on that tragic day. As we have for the past 74 years, we have held our ceremony inside City Hall. Uh, the one time we were out here was back in 2008 when we unveiled our, our great monument behind us right now. Uh, in those ceremonies inside was a, a beautiful piece of anthracite that was presented to us to, by the uh, Sacramento, uh, yeah, Sacramento, sorry, Scranton Fire Department from Pennsylvania. At this time, I would like to acknowledge two members of the Scranton Fire Department that have come up here to celebrate with us. One of them is Dave Gervasi and Bob Setta from the Scranton Fire Department. Thank you, guys. Uh, today we continue our tradition, only uh, we changed it a little. We are now outside. And this is the first time we've been outside since we unveiled the statue in 2008. So they are upstairs looking out for us, and they gave us a decent day to be out here. So I want to thank everyone for that. Um, since the dedication, uh, City Hall Plaza has been renovated. And uh, during the renovations, the main concern of everybody in this city, between Mayor uh, Carpenter and his staff and everyone else, was the preservation of our monument. And I, I have to say thank you, Mayor, to you and your administration, Chief Williams, everything you did for us. It was amazing to see the work that went on here and without touching our area, and uh, we're very grateful for that. Thank you. And as always, at the uh, close of the ceremony today, we will ask the family members to join us out there at the laying of the wreath at the uh, base of the monument. Uh, so at this time, I would ask Reverend McCoy to uh, please join me up here to say the opening prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we pause and give thanks for those who preserved and protect life, those who serve you. Giving of themselves, even sacrificing their lives for those entrusted to their care. Lord, we pause and remember those who gave their lives on the night of the Strand Fire 75 years ago this day. We are grateful to follow after them in a proud legacy, Lord, of courage and duty fulfilled. We ask, O oh Lord, that in our time and by the work we do, 
we may serve you also with the dedication, perseverance, the strength which matches theirs. Lord, we ask you to bless their families, bless our fire department, bless our police department, first responders, public officials all, that we in our time may serve and honor you. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend McCoy. Uh, once again, thank you all for being here, especially family members, friends, uh, outside fire departments, uh, everybody from the city of Brockton and elsewhere. Thank you very much for being here. At this time, I'd like to uh, uh, thank the following dignitaries for being here. Of course, uh, Mayor Carpenter, thank you very much. Uh, we have retired Fire Chief Ken Galligan, retired Fire Chief Rich Francis, uh, city councilors, uh, I'm not, uh, we have Bobby Sullivan in the back, thank you very much. We also have Councilor at Large Shana Barnes, Councilor at Large Wynn Farwell. Uh, I don't know if there's any others here. Oh, and our youngest counselor, Jack Lally. Did you get, did you get a note to miss school? <laughs> Very good, Jack. Glad to have you here. <laughs> Councilor uh, Tim Cruz, president of the city council, is unable to be here today, but he sends his best wishes and uh, have a great day from his uh, staff and all that. So thank you. Uh, as we go on, uh, we also have a few other dignitaries from the state house. We have Senator Mike Brady. We have, we have Representative Michelle Dubois, Representative uh, Claire Cronin, and our newly elected and just sworn in yesterday, Representative Jerry Cassidy. We also have uh, John Buckley, the Plymouth County Register of Deeds. And Mac McDonough, the Register of Probate. And I don't believe I've missed anyone. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, I'd like to invite Mayor Bill Carpenter up to say a few words. down a little bit. There we go. Well, first of all, welcome everyone here. Uh, it's great to see this tremendous turnout uh, today for the 75th anniversary of the Strand Theater fire. I, I can't help but think what a difference one year makes and what it looked like out here one year ago. We were under construction and buried under about six feet of snow. So uh, it's great that uh, everything has come together so that we could uh, be out here with the monument uh, as we remember those who perished 13 years ago. I think that <clears throat> today and every day really is about honoring and remembering. Honoring those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, but also remembering the events of that day 75 years later. And that it's so critical that we um, keep their memory alive and, and use it uh, as a model and remembrance of the sacrifices and the risks that are taken by first responders every day. And Brockton has such a, a great history, and uh, this event is a critical piece of our history. And uh, I'm so glad that uh, the firefighters have done such a tremendous job in marking this day every year. You can't help but think about how much has changed in 75 years uh, since the day of that fire even in particular in terms of firefighting. Uh, the fire prevention we have today, the technology we have today, the state-of-the-art communications we have today. Uh, but there's one thing that has not changed, one thing that's exactly the same as 75 years ago, and that's the commitment of the firefighters to protect us. What hasn't changed is whether it was 75 years ago at the Strand Theater or today, the firefighters are running into the burning building while everyone else is running out. And 
I can just look at events of just the last few hours to see uh, how much the firefighters here in Brockton mean to us. Because literally just hours ago, we had a fire here in the city in which three people were rescued off the roof of three people were rescued off the roof of a burning building just hours ago, right here in the city. Uh, so, yeah. And there are events that happen every day that are heroic, but we just don't get a chance to see them and appreciate them. I have trouble with this microphone. Uh, last night as I was on my way over to the, the, fire, mu the fire museum, uh, there was a, a bad motor vehicle accident involving a motorcycle, and the firefighters are our first medical responders. And they were on the scene and uh, provided life-saving life uh, first aid to get uh, the victim to the hospital and, and saved his life. So these events are taking place every day. And the world has changed a lot since 75 years ago. I know it was just two years ago, shortly after becoming mayor, that I asked our first responders to carry Narcan. And in many communities, that was a big deal at first, but it wasn't here. And I want to thank Chief Francis, uh, our retired chief who was chief at the time, uh, and Archie and uh, Eddie Kelly from the Professional Firefighters, because they willingly embraced the additional duties of saving lives by using Narcan. And last year in the city of Brockton, just in one year, we had over 1,000 Narcan saves just last year. So these lives are being saved every day uh, by our firefighters and first responders carrying Narcan. And uh, uh, Eddie, I especially appreciate your leadership on this issue two years ago uh, in the willingness of the firefighters to add another tool to their toolkit in order to save lives. So I hope that uh, we'll use today's events to appreciate what the firefighters are doing for us every day. So today I want to have us honor the service of our firefighters that are assembled here, but while we are remembering and honoring the memory of 13 heroes who perished 75 years ago today. So I do have an official proclamation from the city of Brockton Thanks, Ashley. Whereas 75 years ago today, 13 Brockton firefighters lost their lives in the line of duty in response to a massive fire at the Strand Theater. And whereas on March 10, 1941, amid flames and burnt building remnants, the spirit of public service and paying the ultimate sacrifice in the name of public safety shone through. And whereas the Brockton Fire Department continues to be a vital part of the community, knowing that at any moment they could be facing injury or death while bravely performing their duties. And whereas the city of Brockton has been greatly enriched and kept safe by their efforts, it is important to recognize the significance of their role within the community. And whereas on this 75th anniversary of the tragedy that took place at the Strand Theater, it is important to remember those who gave their lives in the line of duty in an effort to keep the public safe. Now therefore I, Bill Carpenter, as mayor of the city of Brockton, do hereby proclaim March 10th, 2016, as Strand Theater Fire Remembrance Day. And I urge all residents of the city of Brockton to recognize this solemn occasion. We salute the service of all Brockton firefighters while remembering those who lost their lives three quarters of a century ago. Signed and sealed this 10th day of March 2016 by myself, Bill Carpenter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, along with the dignitaries, we also have uh, uh, Councilor Shirley Azak and school committee member Tom Minicello. Uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I got to move this up. Uh, we also have uh, some dignitaries from our uh, state union in our international, and as you heard the name, Ed Kelly, president of the PFFM. Thank you, Eddie, for being here. 
And we have our uh, newly elected third district vice president from the International Association of Firefighters, Jay Colbert. Thank you both for being here. Now, at this time, I would like to uh, invite Chief Mike Williams uh, up to the podium to say a few words. To all of you who have joined us here today, <clears throat> excuse me, dignitaries, clergy, Fire Marshal Ostrowski, fellow chiefs, and members of the fire service, and most importantly, members of our fallen brothers' families. On behalf of the Brockton Fire Department and the entire city of Brockton, I welcome you to the 75th annual Strand Theater Memorial Ceremony. Seventy-five years ago today, March 10th, 1941, on a theater balcony that stood just feet from where we are gathered this morning, 13 brave Brockton firefighters lost their lives. When the roof of that theater, weakened by the destruction of fire, collapsed on top of them. This tragedy was at the time and remains today one of the worst loss of firefighter lives in our nation's history. Each of these 13 firefighters left behind a wife and family. As a group, a total of 26 children were left fatherless. It was a day of great sadness, not only for the families of these men, but also the members of this department in the entire city of Brockton as well. This city came together with tremendous strength and an outpouring of compassion for its fire department, a tradition that continues today with this show of support by all of you here this morning. I cannot begin to imagine the painful sorrow that was felt on that day and in the days, months, in years to follow. The loss of husbands, fathers, uncles, brothers and sons of this tragedy, I know for sure was and remains devastating. So again, to the families, my heart truly goes out to you. I would like to thank all the members of this department, both past and present, who have poured out their hearts and given so much of themselves to remember our fallen brothers, most evident by the Strand Theater Memorial that sits directly behind me. The hours and hours of hard work and dedication that were required to complete this beautiful tribute speaks volumes to the passion and commitment that you all have to this department and your chosen profession. In closing, I would like to read a poem, a poem that has been read at this ceremony in the past, but because it is so poignant to today's remembrance, I would like to share it with you again. It was written by a retired New York City firefighter, and its title, May They Not Be Forgotten. Brother, when you weep for me, remember that it is meant to be. Lay me down when you leave, remember I'll be at your sleeve. In every dark and choking hall, I'll be there as you slowly crawl. On every roof in driving snow, I hold your coat and you will know. In cellars hot with searing heat, at windows where a gate you meet, in closets where young children hide, you know I'll be there at your side. The house from which I now respond is overstaffed with heroes gone. Men who answered one last bell did the job and did it well. As firemen, we understand 
that death say card dealt in our hand. A card we hope we never play, but one we hold there anyway. This card is something we ignore as we crawl across a weakened floor. For we know that we're the only prayer for anyone that might be there. So remember as you wipe your tears the joy I knew throughout the years. I did the job I loved to do. I pray that thought will see you through. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, continuing along with our dignitaries, uh, Fire Marshal uh, Ostrowski, thank you for being here. Uh, and good luck in your new uh, venture as a fire marshal. Thank you. <laughs> also along with the, uh, the fire marshal, we have uh, two members of our professional firefighters in Massachusetts. We have our information officer, Billy Cabral. <laughs> and our uh, District 1 Vice President, Rich McKinnon. Thank you for being here. Uh, at this time, I would like to invite International Association Firefighter <clears throat> District 3 Vice President Jay Colbert to the podium. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Carpenter, members of the great and general court, local officials, firefighters from all over, and especially family members of those that were here to memorialize. <clears throat> Let me just start by saying what an honor it is for me to be asked to say a very few words <clears throat> about these bra brave men who gave their lives just over my left shoulder 75 years ago today. March 10, 1941 was the back end of the Great Depression. And I'm sure despite the 84 hour work week and the $35 pay that firefighting was considered a good and secure job. The men who did this job back then didn't have the luxury of protective turnout gear. They didn't have the luxury of self-contained breathing apparatus so that they didn't move around in a hazardous environment. And they certainly didn't have the luxury of radio communication to tell them what the danger they were in and where in fact they were inside of that building. What they did have was the same selflessness and courage that the men and women of the Brockton Fire Department today have. And that is what propelled them into that building that cold March night 75 years ago. The first paid fire department in this country was in Massachusetts back in 1679. It's 337 years ago by my math. And the greatest loss of life for firefighters in this Commonwealth was the 13 men who died in the Strand Theater. Oftentimes after a tragedy like this, people want to compartmentalize the memory and put it in a back recesses of their mind. It's, time, it's kind of a type of amnesia. We see it happening today with 9-11, 15 years ago. With the attack on Pearl Harbor just nine months later, I'm sure the city of Brockton moved on to the world war that many of the young men of this city were going off to. <clears throat> With the victories over Japan and Germany, I'm sure that that occupied a lot of the mindset in the city at that time. So the Strand Theater got pushed back and other tragedies across the Commonwealth where numerous firefighters passed. The Vendome 9, the Worcester Six. These both happened years after the Strand Theater. And memorials and dedications to both of those things happened prior to the Strand Theater. But this profession of ours never lets us completely forget these types of terrible events. Even though it's difficult to give proper appreciation for what those men did for the city of Brockton all those years ago, what the city of Brockton, the city of champions, and Local 144, represented by these men and women of the Brockton Fire Department, did 
to memorialize them with this tremendous monument behind us was very, very commendable. And for that, you should be applauded and commended. And myself, representing the International Association of Firefighters, wants to do that to you today. So I want to thank all of you for coming out here, especially the family members of the 13 who passed. I know there's probably 10, family, 10 families represented here. I want to God bless those souls that we lost that night. God bless their family members who are here today. God bless the Brockton firefighters. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Jay. Uh, we also have a few more dignitaries that I'd like to announce. Uh, City Councilor Ann Beauregard. And... Yep. And we also have Superintendent of Schools, Kathy Smith, with us. At this time, I would ask that uh, Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts President Edward Kelly to the podium, please. Archie, thank you. And um, I'd just like to say it's, it's an honor to be serving and representing the 12,000 Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts. And as Vice President Colbert mentioned, the largest loss of life we've ever had was the Strand Theater. The 13 brave men who are husbands, fathers, sons, brothers, cousins, and friends who showed up to work one day, just like firefighters throughout our country did today. And just in the last 36 hours, we had nine Seattle firefighters blown across the street at an explosion. We had two Washington, D.C. firefighters burnt badly a few hours ago that are in a hospital right now. And I ask for the, your prayers for them. But the sacrifice that was made 75 years ago, just feet from where we are now, epitomizes the sacrifice that firefighters make throughout the world every day. And in that legacy of sacrifice that those 13 men taught us, we carry that every day. And just like the mayor mentioned, right here in the city, lives were saved just last night by some of the men standing behind me today. We are honored to be able to follow in the footsteps, in the legacy, in the sacrifice that your family members made. And every day we get up, we will carry their spirit with us. Thank you for your sacrifice. Brockton is the city of champions, and we never forget. And Local 144 never forgot your loved ones. God bless you, and thank you. Thank you, Eddie. And uh, now from uh, our state delegation, I'm going to invite uh, Representative Jerry Cassidy to the podium. Archie, thank you very much. Archie is like a brother to me, really is. Uh, 144, they are the best. Best. Uh, I've, been, I've been coming to this uh, memorial for the last 25 plus years with uh, 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 State Senator Tom Kennedy and uh, he's smiling down right now because I remember him being in the back corner talking to uh, Chief Farrell. Uh, you know, he'd be here for hours, hours and hours. Uh, and uh, he's smiling down because he's up there in heaven with the 13 fallen firefighters just talking about what county you're from, where, what street do you live in Brockton? And Archie knows this for, for a fact, but uh, he, was, he was a great man. And uh, I'm here also because I was at my cousin's house up uh, on the, the west side of Brockton, Trisha Carroll Cruz. She, she's one of the granddaughters um, of, uh, of uh, Captain John, John Carroll. And she was telling me the other night that uh, uh, this is uh, 
his his helmet, and it's uh, very moving, Trish, to, to to hear the story about your uh, grandfather uh, and your father. I mean, he was 11 years old when uh, when when he uh, his father died. Uh, he wasn't even on duty. He was over at Station Four. Uh, heard about the fire, came up here, ran up, um, and your father went to school the next day. Didn't even know that uh, that he had died. He came home from school. He found out. Uh, that was very moving. And and your 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 son Peter wrote this uh, report about uh, your grandfather. He uh, was a very special man. And I challenge everybody to come up here and read this this report. Uh, it was phenomenal. And uh, in the last part of the conclusion, it said, when the tragedy of September 11th occurred, it made me think a lot about my great-great-grandfather died. He never thought twice about helping others. I have been told that he loved his work and was a very brave man. I believe what the Enterprise wrote on that very day. Captain Carroll died as he would have liked, leading his men into action. I also just want to say the new recruits have to step up and do exactly what Archie's doing. Keep this going, this memorial. And I just want to say God love you all. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. Uh, to close our speaking portion of this uh, event, I would ask that Peter Reardon, president of the Brockton Firefighters Relief Association, Come up and say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. The Brockton Firemen's Relief Association was incorporated in June of 1887. The purpose of this association would be to provide relief to our sick and injured members. The relief provided many benefits, with two of the most important being assisting active members if physically unable to do work by paying them up to 10 cents a day and assisting in the burial of our own. Clarence Davis would be the first to be buried with the relief assistance in the Ashland Cemetery, North Main and East Ashland Streets on October 23, 1888. Many men have followed firefighter Davis and when our loss is great, there is something to losing a mass number of firefighters at one time. Should have brought my glasses. <laughs> Until September 11, 2001, Brockton would be known throughout the fire service for having lost the most firefighters in structural collapse due to fire in the nation. March 10, 1941 would test the Relief Association as we would come to the aid of these 13 families. Having been involved to too many funerals to count since my tenure, I can attest that 13 funerals to plan and execute is no easy task. The relief along with the members of our department and local would be up to this monumental task and these 13 men would all be honored in the highest regard. These 13 names are blazoned across headstones in this region. St. Michael Cemetery in Avon, St. Mary's in Randolph, Pine Hill Cemetery in West Bridgewater, Island Pond in Ludlow, Mass, with seven members interned at Calvary and one at St. Patrick's right here in Brockton. Each year, the Brockton Firefighters Relief Association visits these graves, along with close to 400 others, as we place memorial flags and share a few moments with each of our past members. The true term of never forget. On December 22, 1983, the Relief Association would revise its bylaws, now taking the name of the Brockton Firefighters Relief Association. Like many things in the fire service, we would adapt and change, our, change to ever-changing societal needs. With the advent of insurance companies and the hard work of our labor movement, the relief would no longer have the need for disability benefits and would now have a better ability to assist in the funerals of our members. Since 1887, the relief has assisted in an average of four funerals a year for more than 125 years. Over that time, many names cry out to me. Marsden, Dickerson, I'm sorry, Dickinson, McRae, Burrell, Chief Edward Sonny Burrell, we miss him at our meetings. As you know, Chief Burrell passed over two years ago, making this the third strand ceremony he has not been in attendance. For 72 years, the Chief paid homage to these 13 brave men 
you see statue behind me. The statue holds his own likeness. Being the last living firefighter to work the Strand Fire, he clearly knew the importance of our history and tradition. During those 72 years, he wasn't here just for the 13 men this monument represents. He was here for the over 400 we have honored since 1888. This type of idealism is what the Relief Association is about, something that must pass down to our new members. I urge all of you today to take a moment, share a thought, a thought of the job with the numerous family members you see here. Share and enjoy your history with a retired guy. Listen to one of their stories. This is a way to honor the job. The fire service is ever changing. We need to stay vigilant, be prepared, and never take what we do for granted, but always follow our traditions. Thank you all. Thank you, Peter. And uh, just, uh, just to let you know what we've always done for those uh, times that Chief Burrell hasn't been here for us, we do have a seat set aside for him right there with his uh, Rockton Fire baseball cap sitting, sitting on it. So in honor of him, that's... <laughs> At this time, I'm going to uh, deviate from the, uh, the uh, presentation portion of this. I'm going to ask our state delegation to come to the podium. Representative uh, Claire Cronin, Michelle Dubois, Jerry Cassidy, and Mike Brady. Uh, the reason I'm asking them to come up is they were very uh, dedicated to this uh, ceremony, and they have uh, some uh, citations to read uh, that will be handed out to the uh, family members at the end of the ceremony. Thank you. I want to thank the uh, Local 144 for all the work they've done time and time again to keep in the memories alive, because we must never forget. And I'm glad uh, that Tom Kenny was mentioned, because he was one of our greatest supporters of our firefighters. And he's up in heaven, as Jerry Cassidy mentioned, with Chief Barrow looking down upon us, because Chief Barrow was an unbelievable man. I'm glad to the Local 144 for the likeness of the statue that they built in his memory. And, and he even had some funny stories. One of the ceremonies we had, we were through some tough economic times, and he had just bought a brand new car. I forget if it was a Lincoln or a Cadillac. And they're saying, Chief, why'd you buy the car? And he goes, I want to help spur the economy. So he always had a good sense of humor. So this is a citation. I know the House has a, a citations as well. This is from the Massachusetts Senate to the family of all the 13 firefighters. In recognition of the 75th anniversary of the Strand Theater Fire, where, where their honor, bravery, and sacrifice transcended the call of duty. And this is signed by the President, Stanley Rosenberg, and also myself and the clerk, William Weld. And God bless you, and your memories will never be forgotten, and, and the memories of all the firefighters will never be forgotten. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for all attending today. Uh, in addition, the House of Representatives wanted to offer its own uh, recognition of the, to the families of those 13 firefighters who paid the ultimate sacrifice. And on behalf of the House of Representatives, my colleagues, uh, State Representative Jerry Cassidy and State Representative Michelle Dubois, I would like to say that the House of Representatives offers its sincerest recognition to all of the firefighters' families in recognition of the 75th anniversary of the Strand F Theater Fire, where the honor, bravery, and the sacrifice and call to duty transcended the call of duty. And it is offered by the House of Representatives and our speaker, Robert DeLeo. So to all the families, thank you. Thank you, Senator and Representatives. Uh, at this time, I would ask that uh, Jay Colbert and Ed Kelly please join me at the, uh, the uh, presentation table.
This time, we'd like to present the families of the 13 firefighters, the IFF, uh, the IFF, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Medal of Valor, thank you, Eddie. And a coin that we designed for the Strand here from Local 144. Both are gonna be presented to a family member of each of the 13. To represent first, Captain John F. Carroll, Ladder 3, family member Trisha Cruz, to be escorted by Firefighter Waisaki. In remembrance of Lieutenant Raymond, Raymond A. Mitchell, Engine Company 4, be family member Lucille Mitchell to be ushered by Firefighter Owen. In remembrance of firefighter Roy A. McKecker, Squad A, to be family member Debbie Walcott, to be escorted by firefighter John Roderick. In remembrance of firefighter Dennis P. Murphy, Squad A, we family members Kevin and Keenan Murphy to be escorted by C.J. Marchetti. In remembrance of firefighter William J. Murphy, Squad A, will be the nephew, William Murphy, to be escorted by fire alarm operator Tapano.
remembrance of firefighter Daniel C. O'Brien, Squad A, by family member Daniel O'Brien, to be escorted by firefighter Michael Zarella. In remembrance of firefighter Frederick, Frederick F. Kelly, Engine Company 1, his son, Fred Kelly, to be escorted by firefighter Heather Doden. In remembrance of firefighter Henry E. Sullivan, Engine Company 1, the family member Jane Hess, to be escorted by firefighter Tristan Burrell. In remembrance of firefighter John M. McNeil, Ladder Company 1, the family member Kelly Young, to be escorted by firefighter Warner. In remembrance of firefighter Bartholomew, Bartholomew Hurley, Ladder Company 1, we feel family member Barbara Bertolino to be escorted by firefighter Charles Davis III. Thank you.
Thank you, Bill. Uh, we do have three other medallions, uh, medals of valor that uh, the family members were not, unable to attend, but we will do all we can to get it to them. Okay, in your prayers, I ask that you include all those serving in the armed forces, those that have given the ultimate sacrifice, those that have been injured, and also remember our brother and sister firefighters, police officers, EMS personnel, and especially remember the, the 13 brave firefighters and their families in your prayers. As we honor these men, we should also take time to remember and all those who fought at the fire, whether they were uh, killed in the line of duty, injured, and injuries not only happen to the physical part of the body, it's also the mental part. And we're starting to see that a lot nowadays. So look out for each other, learn the signs, and remember, we're here to take care of each other. Charlie Haywood. At this time, we'll be giving the reading of the names. We have jo Captain John F. Carroll, Ladder Company 3. Up. Lieutenant Raymond A. Mitchell, Engine Company 4. Up. Firefighter Matthew E. McGarry, Ladder Company 3. Firefighter Roy A. McCarrigan, Squad A. Firefighter Dennis P. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter William J. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter Daniel C. O'Brien, Squad A. Firefighter George A. Collins, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Frederick F. Kelly, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Martin E. Lipper, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Henry E. Sullivan, Engine Company 1. Firefighter John M. McNeil, Ladder Company 1. Firefighter Bartholomew Hurley, Ladder Company 1. And at this time, we'll do the ceremonial sounding of the bell.
retrieve the coast. At this time, I would like to thank the honor guards from the Brockton Fire Department, the Brockton Police Department, and from the Scranton Fire Department who allowed us to carry their flag in our procession. I'd also like to thank the Brockton Firefighters Pumps and Drums and all those members from other uh, communities and brigades that joined us here today. Also, a special thanks to retired Chief Galligan and members of the Fire Museum, Jim Benson, George Churchill, and Nicole Casper. Thank you very much. And by thanking them, I want you to know that there is a display, a display in the City Hall Rotunda. It's a very moving sight, and I, I ask you that you at least walk through and see it. So thank you again for that. Uh, we also have one other gentleman that uh, I'd like to introduce and thank him very much for what he's done for us, and that's Bob Shore, uh, the gentleman that uh, designed and sculpted our beautiful monument. Thank you, Bob. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask Reverend McCoy to once again come up and uh, say the closing prayer. Let's pray. Lord, in the midst of the chaos and confusion, smoke and fire, rhetoric and chaos that invades our lives so often, we give thanks that there is order, there is respect, that there is grace and dignity and courage in the values we uphold. For these, we give you thanks. For our life depends upon them, depends upon you. We ask your blessing upon these families, giving thanks for their loved ones and the 13 who died at the Strand Fire. We give thanks for our fire department, police department, the men and women of our armed forces. We ask that you defend them with your heavenly grace. You strengthen them in their trials and temptations. You grant them courage in the perils they face and a sense of your abiding nearness always, Lord. Be with us. Help us to serve as well. Help us to take from here all that we are given that we may serve you, each in our own way and together as your people. We ask it in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend McCoy. Uh, at this time, I want to thank you once again for being here and invite you to join us at the Brockton Firefighters Union Hall at 80 Perkins Ave for a collation. Prior to uh, our closing of this ceremony, the Mitchell family would like to make a presentation to the uh, Brockton Fire Department.
Thank you very much for that wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, that closes our ceremony today. Please join us for uh, the laying of the wreath at the base of the monument. Thank you very much. Thank you.